professional bouts and four exciting fighters. So here we go. First up, please welcome to the cage, Rocky Edwards. It is our first look at Rocky Edwards, and Edwards has been around, to say the least. 11-7-1 and one as a pro. Lots of pro fights, and in fact, some people think he's pretty good. He is the number one ranked welterweight in the state of North Carolina and number three in the state of Ohio, according to Tapology. Kind of a weird mix there. Usually guys are in the Midwest or they're in the South, they're in the West. Rocky Edwards has just been around and has fought everywhere. And now he is fighting in Wisconsin right here at Monona Terrace and going to be taking on basically the top dog in the game for the chosen few. And that is Mark Leminger who will get a standing O, I am sure, when he is announced. So that's Rocky Edwards. Now let's listen to the introduction for one Mark Leminger. Next up, his opponent, Mark Leminger. And here comes Leminger, and indeed it is loud as everybody is loving the return of Leminger, who hasn't fought here since January when he took his one and only loss. We will see if he bounces back here tonight against the very grizzled veteran in Rocky Edwards. Leminger getting checked out. You can check out the Carbon World Health Tale of the Tape. And we will now check out the introduction from Chris Garrity. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-main event of the evening, brought to you by the Coliseum Bar, the official after-fight party of Chosen Few Fighting Championships 15. This bout is scheduled over three rounds at 180 pounds. First up, this man fighting out of the Coliseum Bar Red Corner. He stands in at five foot 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 179 pounds. He hails from Sunbury, Ohio, and in 19 bouts, he has 11 impressive victories. Representing top dog mixed martial arts, Rocky the Number Edwards. His opponent is the man being out of the heart. Madison Blue Corner. He is an all war fighter representing the chosen few gym. Hailing from Johnson Creek, Wisconsin, he has an impressive professional record. Seven victories, only one defeat. He stands in at six feet tall. He weighed in at 174 and one half pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the cage, Mark Leminger! They love Mark Leminger here at the Monona Terrace and why not? He always puts on a good show, looking to bounce back from his loss to Jason Witt back here uh, in January. That was January the 27th, and that was a knockout at the hands of Witt. Along with Chris Garrity and the machine, Gerald Mearshart, I am Rich Reynolds, cage side for this one, and what can we expect from Leminger and Edwards? Well, what Josh Steary did here is he took him out of the frying pan and put him right back into the fire. What Jason Witt had was experience, and he was tough, and he was strong, and he gave Mark Leminger the fight of his life and really beat him up in that fight. And here he goes, puts him right back in with another 19-fight veteran, 11 victories 
plays for this guy, so he's not taking it easy on him, making sure that Mark gets it all back together here. I interviewed Leminger before the fight. He said he is refocused and recharged. As Leminger, with that loss to win, it was almost like you could see it coming. He had a tough fight against Brandon Suber, a real tough fight against Patrick Delgado, and then eventually the loss to win. Sometimes you need that kind of to wake up a little bit along with that eight-month layoff. Now he comes back and looks charged up. And this is the Leminger that I'm used to seeing, a guy that doesn't let his opponent breathe. Right. Yeah, right now, good pressure against the cage. He's working little punches on the inside. I'd like to see maybe some elbows slip from underneath or over the top. But all in all, some pretty decent control. Um, you know, his opponent, Rocky Edwards, seemed pretty good from the distance. You know, he had some kicks to inside to the legs. Looked like he was comfortable at range, and Leminger made the good adjustment of getting inside and really making this a dirty fight. You know, is it a message at all, too, that Josh Terry sends to Mark Leminger by not putting him at the top of the card? We've seen him there time and time again, and after that loss, he drops him to the co-main event. Is that really putting even more pressure on Leminger to get back to the top of that card? Now, I'd love for you to be right about that. The one thing I can tell you that I know about fighters is... They don't care where they are on the card. They just want the fight over with. So anything, they want to fight long before the main event. My brother used to tell every promoter that hired him, make me the first fight. Make me the first fight. Even if he was going to be headlining against the stud he was brought in to lose against or whatever it is. But yeah, fighters don't care about where they are, where they're fighting. They just want the fight to go. And Gerald can probably attest yeah, to Gerald, some of that Yeah, Gerald, you were too. agreeing with every bit of that, weren't you? Yeah, I like to get in there and get it done with and... You know, if there's a big crowd now, you know, being in the UFC, I do like to be on the, the main card and stuff like that, or at least the prelims, because it's cool to have the crowd get behind you. But right now, the crowd get behind these guys. Some pretty good scrambles. Edwards looking for a guillotine. Leminger doing what he can to maintain position to prevent himself from getting choked, but Edwards really doubling down. Doesn't look like he's quite around the neck, able to secure this position, but Leminger is stuck in a precarious position. He's got to work back to get to the leg possibly come up on a single leg or at least regard. Yeah, and he did a good job with that because the way they fell, that guillotine could have been set in right way and, uh, and um, uh, Rocky could have been in the mount position, but Leminger did a good job turning his hips, getting his feet up against the cage here, and now that pressure is not really on the neck anymore, and there's actually more pressure on Rocky Edwards holding his arm here, tiring his arm out, just keeping Leminger in place here. Leminger comes into this fight as the number one ranked Wisconsin middleweight, according to Tapology. For Edwards, he comes in as the number one ranked welterweight in North Carolina. So a couple of highly regarded fighters here in this co-main event. Leminger's got to be careful trying to stand up here. Edwards is waiting to time this knee to the head. Oh, gets up in time, and now Edwards back on the legs. Leminger looking to defend. Good job from Leminger dropping his hips there, Gerald. Yeah, he did a real good job squaring up, getting his hips low, getting the underhooks back, and now he's turning him around. He's got Edwards back against the fence, working some of that clinch. This guy's really going back and forth right against the cage. Both seem to be comfortable fighting in close quarters. Leminger back to putting the pressure on Edwards, and Edwards turns it back around here in the final minute of the first round, and the crowd looking to explode for Leminger as this has been a pretty even round here in round number one. Leminger had the advantage early. It's been Edwards since then, and a good knee to the leg of Mark Leminger. He does that again, and why not? It's open right now, and Leminger's going to have to get out of that. Right now, Leminger has got to get that left arm back around the head and try to dig in an underhook if he wants to get out of this position. He's actually in danger of having Edwards take his back and possibly returning him to the mat, or even if he can jump up, he can try and get that head arm choke from the feet. It's a rare submission, but I've seen it done before. Leminger took a look at the clock. It is the final 10 seconds of round number one. Mark still looking up at the screen right there, looking to break this hold of Edwards. Edwards, a good job to finish up round number one. We're scheduled for five. We're back for round number two right after this on 57 Sports. We were talking about the experience of Rocky Edwards, a six-year veteran who actually at one time fought on a Bellator card, lost the split decision all the way back in 2012. He's been around for a while, and his experience was showing in round number one. 
Yeah, Rocky Edwards is a game opponent. Uh, it was Leminger early keeping him against the fence and, you know, working in there with some, like, clinch boxing and stuff like that. But I think Edwards did enough to take the round with that guillotine attempt at the end. He's the only one of the two fighters that really threatened to finish in that round. And I think he had him had Leminger against Cage enough to even that part of it out. So I think right now it's 10-9 Edwards. Well, and similar to the Vanilla Grillo fight, uh, Jason Witt didn't allow Leminger to bully him around, and that's how Leminger wins fights. He's a bully. He's big, strong, he's faster than everybody else. Neither of these guys are letting that happen, so this is a really pivotal moment in this fight to see how he responds here. Leminger coming off that loss, like he said, to the Vanilla Gorilla back in January, a very one fight as... Witt was really able to take it to Leminger in that one. Now here to start the second round, an exchange of blows, and it's Leminger once again in that familiar position of pushing his opponent against the side of the cage. And I like the damage, throwing strikes to the face, keeping his hands low after that, so he's making sure to keep Rocky Edwards kind of on his toes here, but a game opponent that Rocky is. Look, he puts Leminger, or at least tries to put him in trouble, but Leminger did a good job staying on top here, still raining down some damage. Right, stuff of the head right now, trying to go to the back. Earlier, Rocky Edwards had that Kimura lock. He might try to hit like a little Peterson roll, we call it, in wrestling. He's grabbing that wrist. He's waiting for Leminger to get his weight towards that arm, and he's going to try and roll him through. Leminger can feel that. He's sitting back towards the cage and just trying to get that wrist back and get more control before he really opens up with more damage. And here's what I love about this. I saw twice Mark Leminger look up at his corner, Damien Decor was saying, throw hammer fist to the side of the head, and what did he do right after it? Threw a hammer fist, listening to his corner, making sure he stays in control here to win this round. Yeah, he's got a good corner trying to tell him what to do. He's looking over there again, and then every time that he does, he's coming back with a right hand, and then that elbow as well into the back side of the ribs of one Rocky Edwards, and that cannot feel good. Those elbows doing damage here in round number two. So right now, if Leminger wants to advance his position to really get in a, a good spot to land some decent ground and pound, he's going to have to come to his left a little bit, but he's going to have to make space and kind of go behind Edwards as not to get rolled. Edwards really doubling down on that wrist, really trying to wait for that roll there. Uh, Leminger could hook the leg with his left leg on Edwards' right leg, but right now he's got him kind of stuck and he's landing some decent punches. So. He's winning the position and opening him up. The crowd's getting excited for this one. Absolutely, but Gerald, you had Edwards winning that first round 10-9. It has been all Leminger here in round number two. Obviously got some good instruction from his corner and Damian Decora and looking to finish as the ref actually getting close in here as Leminger has been hitting a lot of shots to the head of Rocky Edwards and he's not answering back. Yeah. And this is an answer from Leminger. This is telling everybody I'm still here. I learned from my last bout and he is punishing Edwards right now. Right. He's using that arm now to spiral ride and kind of keep Edwards weight down and now he's found a home for his punches, and this could be in danger of stopping the fight if Edwards can improve his position. Edwards looking to get out of this, somehow scurrying for a way to get loose from Leminger, but Leminger stays in control, and on top of Edwards now looking to free up a hand so that he can continue to rain down blows. Yep, right now, Leminger being smart, putting that knee on that elbow to try and pry his hand out and get back to those strikes. That worked. Nice job and a good call there by the machine as Leminger looking to finish this one off. Edwards holding on, still 90 seconds left in this five-minute round. And a quick rules check for the folks at home. When you see punches to the side of the head, the way they usually judge those punches, if it touches an ear, it's good. Anything behind the ear they consider back of the head, which would be an illegal blow, especially if you're doing it intentionally. So when you see Leminger throw these punches, you see him really pounding the ears of Rocky Edwards. They are extremely painful punches and completely legal as you look at it. I was biting down on that arm lock, trying to go for a Kimura. Really sagging down, trying to get this reversal and possibly get a submission. Wow, Leminger Edwards. fighting it. An impressive job by Edwards to take as much damage as he did to get to this point. And now looking to reverse this on Leminger and maybe finish the fight the other way. And Mark now 
is going to have to do something to get out of it. So Edwards wants to turn towards us in the cage to try and get that arm out. And Leminger actually wants to circle behind Edwards to try and drag him back to the mat and get his body behind Edwards so he can't get Kamora. Right here in front of us is the action at round number two from Monona Terrace. This crowd looking to explode, trying to cheer Leminger on to his eighth victory as a pro. But now it is Edwards who had the armbar. Leminger gets out of it. Good reversal there by Mark Leminger to finish up the second round strong. And a great job from Levinger to even up this fight. And again, depending on the judges, who knows, as a dominant round. So is it even? Is there a 10-8 somewhere in there? But great show from Mark Levinger in round two. And the fans here approve. We're back for round number three right after this on 57 Sports. All right, action from round number two. You see Edwards getting the better of Leminger early, but then after that, it was about four good minutes from Mark Leminger. Yeah, Leminger just getting on top. You know, at first he had his wrist trapped. He was worried about getting rolled, but then he turned that into a spiral ride for himself, set his weight back, and just let loose with the ground and pound. Here we see that Kimura reversal. He's going for a reverse triangle, and then tries to get an arm bar. Leminger comes out on top and gives him an elbow for his troubles. A lot of action there on the mat in the second round. Now we'll see. I think we got it about one round apiece. We'll see what the judges are thinking after this. But we go to the third round scheduled for five as Mark Leminger looking to get back on the winning track here at Monona Terrace. Nice little hematoma developing under the right eye of Rocky Edwards. His vision has got to be a bit obscured by that, too, because you see it closing his eye up. A lot of red in the white part of that eye, so some good damage thrown in that second round by Leminger. Yeah, good call there. there. I don't see a cut yet, and if the cut would be coming, it would be underneath the eyes. He's not pawing at it, but it looks like it's just about ready to open up as that thing is definitely becoming a big golf ball. Yeah, Edwards definitely wearing the worst of the damage right now. He's backing off. I don't know if he's a little tired or just worried to have Leminger get close as he pops him with a jab, but Leminger definitely built his confidence up in that second round. He's just walking him down right now, waiting for his opening. Uh, you know, if I'm in Leminger's corner, I want a little more punches on the way in and then work to get that takedown. And if I'm in Edwards' corner, I want him to control the center of the cage and try and use that range and distance and land strikes from the outside and maybe try to outpoint your way to a decision or possibly even set up the TKO from the feet. You know, we, I, we've been talking about damage all night long. How much does it play into the judge's decision when you see a guy's face that beaten up? Does it change how they're viewing the fight? Oh, good catch on that kick with a return. And, you know, as far as the judges, I feel like that that really differs judge to judge. You know, the, the rules are supposed to be effective striking, grappling, and control. And, you know, it depends on what you deem effective. Do you deem, you know, the accumulation and the volume effective or a couple punches that leave really bad damage? You have to take into account, you know, what effect the strikes are having other than the facial damage. Some guys bruise real easily. You know, maybe they just got really bad scar tissue and, you know, some judges want to see like the amateur boxing route and just a lot of punches landed and they like that more than, you know, big shots that rock guys. So it's always different. It's, like we've been saying all night with the judges, you never know. So it's yep. always better to play it safe and finish the fight. Now, Rich, there's, I have a like and a dislike right now with Mark Leminger. I, I love that he's keeping it on the feet. He's landing some good shots. He's obviously confident. What I don't like is the lack of head movement in these strikes. He's leaning in. He's putting his chin out every time he throws. Now, I don't know how much Edwards has left to connect on any of these counter punches, but I'd like to see a little bit more head movement from Leminger. Yeah, one thing when you train on, on striking, if you train as a boxer, one thing they're always telling you is you've got to move your head. You can't be an easy target. And Leminger right now, that might be the one chink in the armor, but he is putting on a good striking display here so far. A lot of good combos for Leminger, and he lands another straight left to the nose there of Rocky Edwards. And yeah, it might not matter, Rich. He did so much damage in the second round to Rocky Edwards that Rocky might not have anything left. 
So it might not matter, but in the future, you really want head movement at a time like this. You'd hate to lose the fight by getting caught and knocked out, you know? Yeah, Edwards, his mouth is open. He is sucking wind right now. And Lemminger looks pretty fresh, bouncing on his feet and looking to take advantage here of Rocky Edwards, looking just gassed here in round number three. Yeah, Rocky Edwards needs to get something going right now if he wants to stay in this fight. Lemminger doing really good controlling it. You know, landing some strikes here and there, pushing them back. I'd like to see him throw, a, you know, a combo like he just did. Maybe that, just like that, follow with some elbows against the cage and then stay glued to him and work for a takedown and really solidify this round. Yeah, I like to see that elbow come in from Lemminger, followed a right up with a good left elbow there. And just to put that into the head of Rocky Edwards knows that that is something that Lemminger will throw. So far, we haven't seen a lot of it. Final minute here in round number three. Lemminger doing good work as a striker here. He is dominating the scoring here in the third round as Edwards just hasn't shown much of anything here in round three. A short time left now. If someone turns it up right now, even Edwards could possibly steal this round if he really lets loose, but Lemminger just getting stronger as this round goes on. Really trying to put a stamp on this and get that decision victory. Saw an overhead right from Lemminger that rocked Edwards for the moment. Followed it up with the left and now a combination. And Edwards tries to shoot the leg here inside of 20 seconds for the round. Lemminger easily steps out of that one as sweaty as they are. He's kind of greased up and that's easy to get out of that. This is going to be a great comeback win for Mark Lemminger. He showed how tough he was surviving the first round, then dominating rounds two and three. Great comeback fight for Mark. Crowd approves here at Monona Terrace as they are on their feet, cheering it on and what looks like an apparent victory here for Mark Lemminger. It's going to be up to the judges, so you never know. We'll come back for the official decision right after this on 57 Sports. Here is action from the third round, and Gerald, what we saw was a lot of striking and a lot of scoring from Mark Lemminger. Yep, Lemminger kind of backing Edwards up into the cage and landing punches in twos and threes and just keeping him at bay. Opened up a little bit more at the end. There we saw him stuff that takedown and just really put a stamp on that third and final round. So we thought Edwards might have taken round number one. The last two rounds seemed pretty decisive for Lemminger again with the judges, you never know. And we've seen some quirky calls here tonight and some, I don't know, curious kind of scoring. We'll see if the judges saw what we saw as we head back up to the cage and Chris Garrity having the official decision in this one. As one last look at some of the action from the third and final round. Looks like Chris is ready. And here we go, our official decision right now with Chris. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of welterweight action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Both Judge Struck and Zabeda score the bout 29-27. Judge Zamatalo scores it 29-28, all in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and fighting out of the blue corner, Mark Leminger! Lemminger with the win, back on the winning track as he rebounds from his loss.